this is a live recap of game 14 and the match is tied 7 to 7 between the two players. Now this was a very intense game and match and you can see that Ding was focused during the game. He was under pressure and he had to think a lot against his opponent. Now look at the stage and you can see Ding at the board and in the background Nepo. Now let's go to the action. In this last game of the classical portion, Ding is playing the white pieces. And they go with the Nimzo defense. Nepo with black playing the Nimzo. There's so many moves. For instance, Kasparov, La Quincy to a lot. But it replayed. And now the first surprise, Bishop D2. Now on that move, I have played that position with black. I like to play B6 and Bishop B7. But here, we go in the center and Nepo goes with c5. So this must have been part of the prep for both players. But now the game goes on and Dink is making more time. And here he makes a very important decision early in the game. A normal move would be e4 with the idea e5. But instead he goes with 9g5. Very aggressive, Quincy 2, 9g5. There's some Knight e4 coming, knight d5, targeting of course h7. So h is play, and here h4. Now very aggressive, and in the game after eight minutes, Nepo play queen c7, attacking the bishop on c4. What happened if black takes? <coughs> now here the knight cannot move because that will be checkmate. That's a well-known pattern. So black would do g6. <coughs> And how of this position? This position is better for white because the h file is open. And after a move like that, here you have bishop b4. We trade the bishops. And here we can see the rook on d1 is perfectly placed. Rook on h1 is also very important. And after a move like that, you have queen c3. And that seems a mistake dropping the piece but we can finish with a checkmate on the h file. Of course, Nepo saw that, doesn't take, play queen c7, attacking the knight. The game goes on, and here Nepo plays knight f8. Why knight f8? Well, defending the h7 square. And now Dean realizes he doesn't have the attack, and he goes into the end game. So Nepo was very prudent and cautious, and now we go into the end game. This is a strange move. Here, the computer recommends rook c7, which is logical. Bishop b4 is a little bit uh, unexpected. And here, they put as well, let me grab on g2. Now, I'm going to fast forward to the critical part of the game. And here, knight b7 and rook d4. In this position, I like black better. Why is that? You have a very nice structure while white pawns are all over the board. So rook c4, an important move. And here, in the game, Ding play b4. But a better move was to play knight b7. And that is b4. Its move, what he missed is you can do king d2. Now you activate the rook, the knight comes back to d6, and this is all fine for white, just about equal. Instead, now Nepo is saying, well, I'm attacking on c5, and if you move the knight, I'm going to capture your rook. So Nepo starts to put pressure here, but here he's rushing. It's black to play, and he's picking up the pawn on c5. But that's where Nepo is not, um, I would say, totally in control in this game, and here it was better to do g6. First. And now these rooks look like they're attacking here, but that's defended, and the rooks don't have any plan on the g file. But the rook on a c file for black are ready to invade white's camp. So if black had played g6, that would be very difficult to play. Maybe you can play king d2, but let's say if you exchange the pieces, you can or you can even give some checks or play like that, 
you can see rook c1 coming, the pawns are better, and eventually rook d4 coming, and black is attacking. So very critical move. And here, Nepo takes on e5. Now, the difference is now white as an active piece on g7. Still, uh, black is better, but Nepo gave uh, some more activity to Ding Liren. And here, Ding make a mistake. The bishop is attacked. There were two moves to defend, and he picks the wrong square. Now, without going into deep details, that was the move to play. And then there will be a lot of exchanges. And here, black has a better end game, but white can hold this end game. And the extra pawn doesn't really matter. But instead, king d2 is played. Now, very quickly, in 18 seconds, Nepo attacked the bishop on d3. Now, a check and defending. And this is the critical moment of the game. Here, Nepo, once again, is trying to go too fast. If he were to pace himself, be patient like Magnus Carlsen, he would have found rook b3. Why is this move so important? I need to explain that if you do, let's say, take, then you have this check, and then you can just go with equal and gain. So the point is in here, white is threatening to do b6, then take and give a check. So that's very important. So let's say that if you play rook d4 here, I have b6. And if black takes, white can take on e8, and then have this very important check, attacking the king and the rook on c3. Uh, loose pieces drop out. So here, the computer says rook b3. Now, this is a winning move because if white try again to do these tactics, bishop b5, the rook on b3 defends b5. So that will never be a threat. And after rook b3, uh, black is lost. White is lost, sorry. Because after that, you can just do like that. And now, this game is definitely winning for black. Black can go here, attack here, and push, and this is very dangerous. At any rate, e5 was played, and now rook h8, rook d6, and Ding finds the only chance. And the chance is the following, check, check, and that discovery is the key of the game, attacking the king and attacking on c3. Now, of course, now we have a rook and game, but now the pawn is on e5. As we can see, because it's on e5, white is threatening rook f6, taking there. So it was better for Nepo not to have the pawn on e5, but on e6. And now the game went on and on and on. And here, Nepo tried. The game went on, but it was always a draw. Because this rook end game, uh, black cannot make progress and push because white has an active rook and counterplay. So that's the thing is after this critical moment, they play another 40 moves and black was trying, but now we reach a main game where here you can simply draw the king end game. So I think it was, this game was, um, if I summarize, very interesting because 95 was aggressive H4 was aggressive, but then Ding Ren was on the back seat, uh, down the pawn, and there were two moments where I think Nepo could have put a lot more pressure, playing G6, homely, and finally, here on Rook G3, patiently activate the Rook, and then pick up the pawn in the best position. And instead, he rushed with E5 and allow the b6 trick or the b6 resource. And then no matter what, this, this, uh, rook and game is actually drawn. So very important. We can see that Nepo is a very ambitious player. He has a very good grasp of the game, but the key moments is tend to rush, both play quickly, miss, counterplay, 
if you were a little bit more patient, it could have essentially won with the black pieces. Ding is very resilient in defense, but here he overestimated his chances with his h4 and then was on the defense mode uh, most of the game, including the rook end game. So very tense, only the tiebreak will decide who is the next world champion. I'll see you in the next one.